weekend with us. We appreciate having you. You are speaking out against the disturbing images we saw at the southern border. Um, there was an assumption by many who voted for President Trump that immigrants would be treated differently than they were under four years of Donald Trump. And yet many of your fellow colleagues in Congress uh, have essentially said that this White House is not doing enough to distance themselves from those policies. Congressman, do you believe that this White House is detaching itself from the policies of Donald Trump on immigration? Well, thank you for having me. I greatly appreciate it. And I would like to make this comment. I thank the president for the words that he uttered when he indicated that there would be consequences for what happened with those horses. He's a person of goodwill. I think he means well. But I know that that behavior is unacceptable that we saw at the border. You cannot have this occur with anyone. Doesn't matter your race, your ethnicity. That's unacceptable. That's why we have the resolution to condemn the behavior and we hope that it will come to the floor. I believe that the president is following the law. Unfortunately, the law has not favored the Haitians for some time. In 1966, we passed in Cong Congress the Cubans Adjustment Act. It became known as wet foot, dry foot, meaning if a Cuban could get one foot on dry land, that person would have a pathway to citizenship after about a year, literally. Never applied to any other persons from any Latin countries at the time. If you came from south of the border, it didn't apply to you. The Cubans never knew something called undocumented status. They were always documented. By the way, I never opposed it. It wasn't something that I opposed. My point is the Haitians seem to always get the short end of this deal, and we've got to change that. Uh, we've got to make sure they're treated fairly. When they're sent back to Haiti now, they get 50 to $100, depend on who you ask. I've heard 100 on television. I asked the Homeland Security Department, and I've got $50. They get a phone card, and they get some food. In a country where there's devastation from an earthquake, they also are in conflict with each other because the law is in conflict in this country. We have a TPS, Temporary Protected Status, for Haitians who were here prior to a certain date. And it's because we know that it's dangerous to send them back. Yet, the Haitians who have come through Mexico, we are sending some of them back. I find it unacceptable. We should not send them back to Haiti. Uh, Congressman, I, I do want to play a portion of uh, a speech that you gave on the House floor this week. I, Let's play this clip for our viewers. Black lives matter wherever they happen to be. They matter in Haiti and they matter at the southern border. The Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas pushed back yesterday on the notion that Haitian migrants are treated differently by the United States than other immigrants. How would you respond to Secretary Mayorkas? Well, the secretary and I happen to be on very good terms. Uh, and I would not want this to be perceived as anything other than a statement of my position. My position is the Haitians were not treated fairly in 1966 when we started the wet foot, dry foot policy. And the Haitians are not being treated fairly now because we have TPS for some Haitians and we don't give it to other Haitians. I believe we ought to give TPS to those Haitians who are coming through at the border. Because if it is unsafe for some to go back, and we know that it is, just had an assassination, just had an earthquake, we know that it is, then we ought to do what I believe not is just the right thing. It's the righteous thing to do. There are some things that you have a moral imperative to do. And I think we need to reexamine that law. I've asked uh, the secretary to do so. And I hope that that law will be reexamined. And let's not send them back. Uh, Congressman, as far as wet foot, dry foot goes, it was ended in 2017 by former President Trump. And, and the counter argument that I've heard repeatedly as to why it was put in place is because the government in Cuba, an authoritarian communist government, kills people who speak out in the street against their rule. The same thing doesn't quite happen in Haiti. And I don't mean to downplay the circumstances there. Surely that is a humanitarian crisis. But do you not see a distinction between those that are fleeing oppression and those stuck in a place where 
it, food is hard to come by and the economy is crumbling? Several points. The first is death is death. You have gangs killing people in Haiti. Now, if the government kills you or a gang kills you, you're still dead. So there's killing taking place in Haiti. The next point, when wet foot, dry foot started, it was for that purpose that you mentioned. But as the years went on, it became, for, it, it, would, it applied to people who just made it to the United States from Cuba. It expanded as a matter of uh, being de facto. De jure, still the same, but in fact, it changed. And as a result of that, many, many persons came. I never opposed it. I just wanted equal treatment for other persons who come to this country from places like Haiti, where they've been uh, suffering for a very long time, too. And finally, this. My argument now is predicated upon having temporary protected status for Haitians, some who arrived before a certain date related to the earthquake. Right. I believe that we ought to give it to all Haitians who are in the country. And why doesn't the Biden administration do that? I don't know why. I think uh, I can speculate and say that it's because of Section 42, which allows the removal of persons for health reasons uh, when juxtaposed to uh, TPS, temporary protected status. But uh, I believe that temporary protected status ought to trump this because the health care needs can be met and satisfied in this country. Uh, we, we just have to be a better country, and I think we are a better country. And I, I'm not... I'm not saying this as a person who doesn't support the president. I say it because I do support him. And one final thing. I believe if we check carefully, we'll find that it wasn't Mr. Trump that ended it. I think it may have been ended under Mr. Obama, the wet foot, dry foot policy. I think it was President Obama that brought it to termination. We'll do the, the fact check after you. You may be right on that. Uh, I did want to ask you. Uh, Congressman, while we have you, about the spending bill that you played a role in crafting that is the subject of much debate within your own party right now. Moderate Democrats uh, have made very clear they're not going to accept that three and a half trillion dollar price tag. They argue that to get that and the bipartisan infrastructure bill through, there's going to have to be compromises. Uh, and I'm wondering what you would be willing to compromise on. Well, I'm absolutely willing to compromise. I'm not sure that it would be wise to negotiate the compromise uh, while I appreciate your having me on to negotiate it now. But I, I see us in a position where failure is not an option. It is not an option. There are other things that uh, we can uh, negotiate. And this is a part of the process, by the way. So I'm not moved that we're at a point where it appears to be a stalemate. It's a part of the process. We have a, the classic circumstance of needs versus numbers. The needs are there but there are people who differ on what the number ought to be. So I'm willing to make some concessions. I, I've, I've lived long enough, 74 years old. I've lived long enough to know that I can't always have my way. So I'm willing to make some concessions. But I do believe that we have these needs that have to be met. And this is a seminal moment in time that requires seminal legislation. What we are proposing on the reconciliation is going to impact generations to come. Child care is absolutely needed. Women work. They're in the workforce in ways and places now that they've never been before. So we need child care. We also need some infrastructure called housing. Out of my window, as I look out now, there's a bridge, an overpass. People live under the overpass outside of a congressional office. If bridges can become housing, then housing can be infrastructure. We've got to do something about affordable housing in this country. We've waited too long, and this is a seminal moment to make it happen. Congressman, we appreciate you spending some time with us this morning. Also appreciate the fact check. You were correct. It was President Obama. I got mixed up. That ended wet foot, dry foot. As always, appreciate the time. Congressman Al Green of Texas, thank you. I love you no less. I love, love you no less. Thank you so much. Of course. So more than 50 professors at the University of Georgia sent a letter to the chancellor.